Hello everybody, I hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another episode of Beautiful Britain. This time I'm coming from a place a little bit close to home, more specifically, my parents' back garden. And the reason we're here is because it's quite an urban environment, as you can tell by the cars going behind me. And I want to prove that there's absolute bounties of wildlife here. And the ones I'm looking for today are the insects. We have so many species of insect here in the UK. We have 27,000 of them. That's over four times the amount of mammal species in the world. So by digging a little bit deeper in these kind of bushes behind me, we should be able to find some fantastic specimens. So why don't you come along with me? Let's roll the title card and get searching. So it was time to find these insects, and by looking in all the borders around and employing a little bit of patience, I found this, a small hole in the ground with a fantastic little owner. This bee here is just one of 200 different species of solitary bee we have here in the UK. And as the name would suggest, these bees like to work alone. They'll live and work alone their entire lives. And what they'll do is they'll burrow tiny little holes like this in the ground, lay their eggs inside of it, fill it with food, and seal it up and move on to the next hole. But to get that food, they need to head over there to the flower beds to collect some nectar and pollen. It's not just these solitary bees that like to hang around these flowers. In fact, there are loads of insects just waiting to be found. Thank you. 
Our solitary bees will normally nest in the ground, but some of them prefer an altogether more urban home. These old walls here provide a surprisingly ideal habitat for all these solitary bees. The crumbling concrete around all these stones makes a series of tunnels all over it. And this is just like the burrows they make out in the grass. Despite being solitary bees, it is quite common to find them in large groups nesting in big walls such as this, but they do still remain solitary. So, with so many bees around, and I'm standing here in shorts and a t-shirt, you might be thinking that I'm quite high risk. However, solitary bees are really quite docile. Because unlike honeybees and bumblebees, they don't have big hives to protect, and they don't have lots of honey, a lot of them have just lost their stingers, particularly in the males of the species, and the females who still retain their stingers won't sting unless absolutely necessary. So having these guys in your walls, pollinating your flowers in your garden, is absolutely fantastic. So great little garden companions, these guys. The bees are not alone in this wall though. In fact, they share their space with quite an interesting lodger. These zebra spiders are about five millimeters long and I just think they are adorable. And with 650 species of spider here in the UK, there's bound to be at least one in your garden for you to fall in love with. Spiders are primarily solitary animals, spending their days searching for food and building webs. But if you're lucky, you might just find something like this. These guys are all juveniles, and they'll stay like this in their early days in a large clumped group for safety. But when they're old enough and strong enough, they'll head out on their own to build their own webs and start their own lives. I'd been finding all sorts of amazing wildlife throughout the day, but there was one group of insects I particularly wanted to see, and I wouldn't find them hanging around the flowers like the rest of them. For these guys, I had to go to a very specific kind of habitat. And what better place to look for them than this rotting pile of wood? So let's open it up and see what we can find. Right, now, now we've opened it up and had a good look inside. I can already tell we've got tons and tons of wood lice. We've got a few big slugs hanging around, some earthworms and even the old millipede crawling about here or there. And what all these guys have in common is they're all decomposers. Or more specifically, they're all detritivores. Now, what these detritivores do is they'll eat dead organic material, like these big logs. And what they'll break it down inside of them and poop out the nutrients. And these nutrients get sucked up by all the plants you see around me. Oh. Sorry, quite a busy road next to me. So I was saying, yeah, the big plants around me, like these trees, the bushes, even the weeds, and these found the basis of the entire nutrient cycle. And so I'm going to let these guys get back on with their day and stop disturbing them anymore. there were a few more places left in the garden that I hadn't checked out yet, so it was time to go see what more I could find.
there we have it. Hopefully I've proved to you guys that you can find all sorts of absolutely fantastic wildlife right in your own back garden in your green spaces. All you have to do is dig a little bit deeper, have a little bit of a harder look, and they will be everywhere, right from the bushes and every flower and every plant. So get out with your cameras, with your binos, or just yourself, and go check out that wildlife. And until the next time, bye-bye.